in my travels studying bats, I have had every kind of experience you can imagine from uh, living with Aboriginal Indians to being captured by ins- terrorist insurgents to... You got captured? Yeah, having my camp attacked by bandits, uh, being hunted by Aborigines that didn't want, that had bad experience with other outsiders and wanted to kill me, uh, being charged by angry elephants, stalked by lions, <laughs> you name it, and I've had it. Tell me about being captured. What happened there? Well, that's that's a really good story to illustrate the uh, value of making, being able to make friends whether you agree with somebody or not. Back in my first big job out of college, I was co-director of the Smithsonian's Venezuelan Project, a big $400,000 field project collecting small mammals. And one of the first places we stayed was high up on a mountaintop in a resort setting where the previous dictator of the country had built this. And when when he was thrown out of power, nobody wanted to acknowledge that that was worth anything. So it was just sitting up there with a caretaker. Well, the, we were allowed to go up there and use it for collecting it was beautiful habitat surrounding it, and uh, I quickly found out, figured out, that the uh, head caretaker there was actually one of the local communist leaders, and uh, we got to be good friends, and he would laughingly call me his his uh, yonk, his amigo Yankee, and I'd call him mi amigo commie. <laughs> And, uh, you know, and, and it wasn't very hard to find common ground that neither one of us agreed with everything our governments did. And uh, I got to be such good friends with him that when my boss, Dr. Handley, came down, he was the director of the Mammal Division at the Smithsonian. When he came down to visit and see how things were going, I borrowed the local communist leader, borrowed his Jeep because ours hadn't arrived yet. And I took Dr. Handley with me looking for bats up in the mountains, and we had the misfortune of running into a secret meeting of, co- of communist insurgents. There ensued a wild chase. We were on a muddy, slick road, very narrow one lane, sometimes dropping off 200 feet on one side. It was crazy. They finally caught us. And when they caught us, the only thing that saved us was we were in the Communist Party boss's Jeep, and they radioed him for instructions what to do with us. Wow. So if and, you were just in an unmarked car. Right. We'd have been in big trouble. At that time, the insurgents were killing an average of 65 police a year on the streets of Caracas. And what did they think you guys were up to? Well, they knew that we were friends of their leader. Right. And their leader knew we were studying bats. But why were they chasing you? Because they didn't know who we were. Right, but what did they think you were doing? Some kind of Yankee spies trying to figure out where they were and how to attack them, probably. Wow. Was that the most danger you've ever been in on an exhibition? Expedition, rather? Uh, probably not. No? <laughs> uh, one, one night on the uh, upper Mavaca River, we were named bats in an area where we didn't think there were any aborigines that would bother us because we had camped with a group of Yonamama. And the idea was you couldn't put a camp between village of Yonamama because then they would all think they could prey on you. But if you became friends of one village, at least they wouldn't bother you and they would view you as useful. So the village that we were staying with, the guys informed me that now way up the river, 30 miles or so, there was an area that I would love to have collected in, but I couldn't because it was controlled by a group of Yanomamo that had shot at everybody who had ever gotten near there and, uh, you know, shot arrows. And uh, so I was afraid to go up there to do any collecting. But then our group of Yanomamo informed me that these guys had gone off on a raid to attack another group and probably wouldn't be back for a couple of months. So I got brave and went up into their area where I didn't think they were going to be 
with a young man, Venezuelan, who worked for me. And we had just parked our dugout canoe on the bank and had gone out into the woods to set nets for bats. When we hear a hundred or so, maybe not a hundred, but a, a goodly number of uh, Yanomamo men coming down the trail, and we uh, immediately thought, oh, my God, we're going to be absolutely dead ducks if they find us. And But I did know that they don't usually go after their quarry. They usually wait in ambush. So we hid out in the jungle until about 2 o'clock in the morning and then tried turning our lights really dim and sneaking along without making any noise to get back to our canoe and hoping they were asleep. And we'll never know whether they were asleep or not because we did get shoved off and got away. But the very next night, we were stupid enough to think we had gone far enough away that they wouldn't find us. And we went back and tried to net again. And then we heard jaguar noises. And I had a Yanomamo and a Maikitari Indian working for me. And they immediately start warning me that's 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 not el tigre uh that's that's the the indians that we're trying to avoid and uh, just making jaguar noises right Commu to communicate among themselves oh wow and but i insisted i thought that these guys were just uh trying to get out of work because i'd been working them pretty hard and that they wanted to go to bed early that night so i didn't really take them very seriously <laughs> And I went off with my shotgun. Back then, we were collecting everything from jaguars to mice. And um, so and, and in those days, it was a big macho thing to shoot a jaguar. So I go off with my shotgun to hunt the jaguar. And it kept moving too fast without noise in between. And I finally dawned on me that, hey, this is more like Indians than jaguars to me even. I went back, and my guys were just ready to actually abandon me and leave me. They were so scared. Oh, no. We didn't even take the nets down. We got out of there as fast as we could, went back to camp, and the next day when we came back to get our nets, all the main strands of the nets had been stolen, proving that these were Indians that were after us, and we probably just got out in time. Ooh. <clears throat> so that's the most danger you've ever been in. Uh, there was the time I was crawling into a cave, and on my belly in a narrow passage and all of a sudden found that there was a big cobra coming out and I had to <laughs> lay perfectly still so that the cobra didn't get upset while he was going by. 